Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel, That Model Railway Guy, and welcome to another episode of me building my modular model railway. And it's a really exciting one today, or one that I'm personally excited about, because today I'm starting on phase two of the build. Now, you may remember from previous episodes that phase one was to build the two fiddle yard modules, then two of the corner modules, and then also the buffer stop module. And if you saw the previous episode, I completed building the buffer stop module in that. If you didn't, here's a little link that you can click now and you can catch up on that. Um, but yeah, since that's now all complete, it's time to start work on phase two, which is building the station modules. And I'm really excited about this because for me personally, this is where it starts to feel more like a model railway. Even though that we've got quite a bit of it built already and there's scenery on the corner boards, um, the station module is just a little bit more involved. So there's points to think about, uh, there's clearances for the platforms, station buildings, the shed. So yeah, there's uh, a lot more going on on this module. Now, I'm not going to completely finish the station area today. Uh, it is quite large and so I'm not doing any scenic work at all, especially as that's quite a long way off yet and I really want to take my time with the station module as well. Um, instead the aim really is just to get the track laid and make sure it's all wired up correctly and is all working. So hopefully at the end of this episode though I will be able to set the layout up in a sort of end-to-end -end configuration and run trains from the fiddle yard through to the station or vice versa. So that is the aim for today. Um, I have realised as well that I haven't actually shared with you the track plan for the station modules yet. I think in the very first episode where I kind of outlined the overall plan, I just sort of said, this is the station area, track plan is to be confirmed. Um, I have now confirmed the track plan, so let's have a look at that, shall we? So here's a look at the rough plan for phase two of the build. And essentially it's a U-shaped end-to-end -end layout with the fiddle yard at the bottom and the station at the top. On the right we have the main station loop with a double platform so two trains can be in the station at once and I've made the platforms long enough to fit trains made up of a loco and at least three carriages, maybe four at a push. On this module the track exits off to the buffer stop board on the right so the engines can run round their trains using the loop. Further over to the left we have the second station module and this is more of a shed area. There's a lot of point work going on here with the double slip and that leads engines up to a two road shed. I've had to compress things slightly here to fit it all in, so it's just a small shed, but I think it'll still work well. Also, at the bottom of this plan, which is the front side of the layout, you can see I have a couple of sidings coming off platform too, and these will be used to store carriages and wagons, but mostly it's to allow me to do a bit of shunting without interfering with the main line. And speaking of the main line, this passes by the shed and exits off to the left where it can join onto another module. So that's the track plan and I've made a good start already because as you can see here the baseboards are already complete. The next step is to put the cork underlay down that goes under the track so I'll catch up with you once I've finished that. So a bit of time has passed and as you can see the cork is now laid onto the baseboard in the formation of the track plan. Uh, normally I use PVA glue to do this uh, but this time instead I opted to use this spray glue. For the most part, it's worked pretty well, actually. Um, there are a few little bits I'll just need to kind of touch up, you know, maybe with a bit of super glue or, or just some PVA. Um, but yeah, certainly for working quickly, it's, it's worked quite well. The only bit of cork that I haven't put down so far is this section here, uh, which is gonna be a little kickback siding with an inspection pit in it. In fact, you can see I've got the kit for that just here. Um, obviously, I need to drill a hole in there and we'll cut out a hole, really, for that. Uh, and I just haven't figured out quite how I'm gonna do that. Obviously, I don't want the inspection pit to be flush to the baseboard uh, because I've got cork everywhere else and then there'd be a difference in height. So I just need to figure out whether I'm going to have a strip of cork here and then cut the hole in that or just have a little strip on either side of the inspection pit for it to rest on and then cut the hole through the baseboard as normal. But I figured that was a bit much for today. Uh, I'm just going to try and get the rest of the track laid and I'll worry about the inspection pit another time. I have also made a couple of alterations to the track plan uh, since the diagram I showed you at the beginning of the episode. Uh, it's nothing big, it was all working fine and it worked exactly as I expected it on the computer. It's just when you see it in real life you realise that there are little things that need to just be altered and changed. Um, the first of those is the carriage sidings. One of the reasons I changed it was because it was all looking a bit straight. Um, the main line obviously needs to be straight because it has to be in the middle of the baseboard so that it syncs up with the other modules and also the engine shed area was kind of in line with all that as well. So I just thought for a bit of variation and also to kind of use this space at the front of the baseboard as well, uh, it just made sense to kind of just, just curve them slightly off. So they're sort of running on a bit of a diagonal now. Um, and yeah, the other reason for that as well was that if you sort of sit about here where I am now, kind of in the middle of the two baseboards, uh, anything that was in these sidings would be blocking anything that was on the main line. So kind of from a visual point of view, 
Um, I'm thinking about this both in terms of like me watching the layout when I'm operating it, but also when I'm filming it in the future for you guys. Um, you know, you do want to be able to see the train that is running in. So I realized just by bringing these forward a bit, it gives you a slightly better view of the main line. So that was another reason for doing it. The second alteration I made is actually even smaller in some ways. Um, you may remember that originally here I had a left hand point and that was serving the two roads that go into the engine shed. Uh, it all worked on paper and it was fine on the computer and everything. Um, but looking at it in real life, I realized that um, just having a point there, even the small radius points, the roads in the engine shed were just too short to really be usable. And then the line that comes off the point that has to curve to get into the engine shed, I realized that that curve was so tight that actually it wasn't gonna be usable for anything other than the smallest wheelbase locos like the Ruston or the Peckett. So um, yeah, I kind of had to come up with a bit of a different plan for that. Um, so I started experimenting. I printed off this. This is a, a Pico template for a Y point. Um, Pico have these on their website, so um, before you buy any points or anything, you can test everything out in real life. So before I went about ordering anything else, I, uh, I printed this out. This is a one-to-one -one scale, so actually I've got, got the actual point here now. You can see that they are the same size, so that's very handy. Um, it's a great planning tool, and it's all free. You can just download them on their website. Um, I believe they have them for the streamlined points. I haven't been able to find any for the set track points, so I, I don't know if they just don't do those, um, but... Certainly they're handy for the streamline points. Uh, and anyway, because this is uh, slightly smaller, in fact, if I show you against the left-hand point, you can see it is quite a little bit shorter. And so that will save me a bit of space. And also it means that the curve isn't quite as sharp either. So I've just basically swapped out a left-hand point here and put in a Y point instead. So that is all the changes. Uh, now I have to start laying the track. And I'm gonna start with the most complicated bit first, um, which is this section here, because there's so many points in such a small area. So just to quickly walk you through this complicated section, uh, starting off big with a double slip, uh, that is gonna go in here, and I have some marks on the baseboard so that I know that everything is in the right place. And then to access what will eventually be the inspection pit here, uh, I'm gonna have this left-hand point. And then we were originally gonna have the left-hand point here to lead into the engine shed, but now we've replaced that with the Y point. So I ordered a Y point and Hattons were very good and they got it to me the next day. So there we go, that is the Y point in. So you can see we've already got quite a lot of points here. Um, but then coming out of platform two, we need a point to kind of join the loop up there. So you have yet another point here. And then finally a fifth point, which goes here. And I'm not gonna put that in just because I need to trim the sleepers on it first, but that is then gonna access the carriage sidings. It is quite a lot of points, but once I get all these in place, the rest of it is pretty much just straight track. The main line is all straight, uh, the sidings are pretty much straight. Uh, there is a little point at the very end of the second platform just to join back to the main line, uh, but I'm hoping that by the time I've done these five points, uh, doing one more, I should be pretty good at it by then. So yeah, um, enough waffle. I think it's time for me to just bite the bullet and get on with it. So a bit of time has passed again and the track laying is now mostly complete. I managed to get all the points done at the more complicated end of the station without too much trouble, and I'm pleased to say that the Y point works fantastically as well and doesn't look out of place at all. For the shed, I actually have a kit for this which I need to build at some point, but I needed it here so I knew what clearance I needed for the two lines that run into it. As a compromise, I just temporarily stuck the basic frame together using blue tack, and if I just remove the shed now, you can see where I made marks on the cork which showed where the doors were. It was then just a case of making sure that the tracks were between those two sets of marks. As eventually my plan is to motorise all the points on the layout, I needed to have holes through the baseboard in order to make this work. This meant before laying each point, I had to mark where the tie bar was and then drill a hole through the plywood top. After that, I was able to put the track and the point back in place and continue on fixing it down. With the track all laid, I did want to do a quick test to make sure everything was nice and smooth, so I pushed a couple of coaches through into the platforms. Much to my surprise, nothing actually derailed, all the point work was fine, and it seemed as though I'd done a pretty good job of laying the track. As I was laying the track, I was also adding dropper wires to all the rails, but I did have to disconnect the boards at one point and put them on their sides for a bit, just so that I could connect everything up. I did do my best to tidy it all up, but don't worry if this all looks a bit confusing at the moment. Additionally, a lot of you guys have been asking how I'm doing the wiring and especially how I'm getting the power to all the different modules, so I will definitely do a full episode on that in the future. And so now that most of the wiring is complete, I've got both of the modules back in here, they're facing the right way up, and I've got them joined together again. But 
excitingly, I don't just have these two modules in here, I actually have all seven of the modules that I've built so far set up in this room. So in the far corner I have the buffer stop board, which you may remember I built in the previous episode, and that at the moment is acting as the head shunt for the station loop. And as you can see on the station module, I've got a few coaches in the station, but just behind it there's a Hornby Scaledale building there, which I'll be using as my station building eventually. Moving on, we have the shed area, which is where all the complicated points were that I was working on earlier. And as the main line stretches past the shed, you can see here it joins onto the two corner boards. The two corner modules take the track through a 180 degree bend, and then as it passes under the bridge, it exits into the fiddle yard, which as you can see, has plenty of storage space for lots of trains. And so, assuming that my wiring has all worked and that I haven't laid the track too badly either, I do have the beginnings of a proper little layout now. In this horseshoe configuration, I can run it as an end-to-end -end layout, where trains start in the fiddle yard and they can run out onto the layout, round the curves behind me, past the sheds, and then into the station. And so finally, I feel like I have a proper layout that I can actually operate some trains on, as opposed to just having a loco run up and down a single stretch of track. Um, one thing I am going to mention, it's a minor point really, but Throughout this video I've been referring to these as the station modules and they will always be sort of joined together in this way but from now on just to avoid confusion I'm going to call this one the station module because that has the station building and will eventually have the platforms on it as well and then this one beside me I'm going to call the shed module because obviously it has the shed on it uh, and that will also be reflected slightly in the scenery as well so the station module will be sort of all nice and pretty it'll look like a well-kept and well-maintained heritage railway station Meanwhile, the shed area will be sort of a bit more dirty and grimy. It's where the loco department are sort of working and overhauling several locos. So, um, yeah, there'll be a sort of a nice contrast there where there's the kind of the, the pretty public facing side and then the sort of more gritty kind of behind the scenes work here as well. Um, so, yeah, with all that said, I think it's time to get to the most important part, which is making sure that this whole new section works. So that means it's time to do some testing, also better known as playing trains. <laughs> here we go. So this is the first of what I imagine will be many episodes focused on the station area. There's still quite a way to go, but I think you'll agree that I've made a lot of progress over the last few days, and the modular layout has certainly expanded. Anyway, please don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon too to get notifications when new videos are released. But that's enough for this one guys, I'm absolutely knackered, so I'll see you in the next video. Bye!